This next question sent to Courtney Drive Through at gmail.com from Adonis Weed. Recently, I have discovered a video on YouTube where Ric Flair basically takes over a WWE 2K14 event and completely ignores Jim Ross's panel moderation, which was allegedly the reason why WWE <laughs> fired Jim Ross for not having any control over the event. Now, my question here is Was that the final drop that spilled the glass, or was it a knee jerk reaction by Vince? Either way, does Vince hate Jim Ross? No, he doesn't. But Vince, uh, when you have Vince as your friend, it can almost be as dangerous as having him as your enemy sometimes. Uh, but no, they did fire JR over that. Because Flair, and from what I understand, Flair was being Flair, and the people loved it that were there and listening to the to panel and the whole nine yards. And from the way that I have heard it, even the video game people were not up in arms or upset or whatever, but Flair just commandeered the whole thing. There had been a couple of kamikazes involved, most probably. And since JR was the host, he took the heat, and he even said on one of his programs, he said, they fired me because I couldn't control Ric Flair. Well, explain to me who they were going to get to fill that fucking job. Um, and yeah, and that, that was the thing, but everybody except the office, apparently the office was mortified while the fans and attendants and the people and the civilians and the sponsors all loved it. Cause it was Flair being Flair and you can't control Flair, but he was telling a bunch of stories and just having a high old time, but it didn't follow the, the agenda that had been set out apparently by the marketing team there. Well, going back to the question of does Vince hate Jim Ross, how would you describe their relationship from what you saw? Well, you know, here's the th Vince has that weird sense of humor and it, where he loves to, what, what would be the word, persecute, prosecute, uh, perpetrate. He loves to fuck with people that he likes. And it's not even, it's, sometimes you can't even really take it as good natured, but he means it that way in his own warped way. If you asked Vince McMahon, if he was sitting at his dining room table, what do you think of Howard Finkel? He would uh, genuinely, honestly say, oh, I love Fink. Fink is, has been a prince to us. He's so dedicated. What a great guy, Fink. Is. And then they would just fucking make him miserable, doing angles and things where he had to be Strip naked down to his underwear on Raw, or they'd beat up his car in the parking lot, or whatever. The constant ribs, the ribbages. Um, with Jim Ross. Yeah, JR and Vince have been contentious sometimes because JR was one of the small group of people that would bow up at Vince and in terms of Vince, listen to that. Here's my side of this. Here's how I look at this, instead of just saying yes, 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 whatever. But at the same time, if you would ask, you know, Vince, oh, I love Jr. You know, he's been a valuable part of this organization. But he made him kiss his ass on TV and made fucking Dr. Heine jokes when Jr. had like 10 feet of his fucking intestines taken out. So you, for the people who have been around him for a long time, they know that's Vince and you don't take it all the way to heart. But that's why a lot of the boys, you know, are not fans. and. That's why Vince has such a reputation as just being weird, because even if he really likes you, he will unnecessarily fuck with you and get entertainment out of it. And if everybody's not laughing, I mean, the push in the pool thing is not a horrible rib, but, um, but that's just, that's one of the examples he has, you know, if I, I don't, nobody's ever pushed Vince in the pool. As far as I know, I don't know how he would react to that. But, the, you know, he's always wanting to fuck with somebody or do something, even in the production meetings or whatever, to call attention to some something that somebody did that they're probably not proud of or a mistake they made or whatever and just fuck with them about it. And, you know, it, it that's the that's the kind of thing that's done in the locker rooms amongst the boys, right? The heel locker room or the baby face locker room. Holy shit, it gets sharp. But it's another thing when it's being done on television or set on television or done 
in meetings where it's not just the boys, but it's the production assistants and it's civilians that weren't really in the locker room, you know, weren't the boys. And when it starts getting that wide, then it's a little like, fuck, let him lighten up a little bit. And that's that's why I told JR that time after my back windshield got knocked out in Atlantic City and I went home, didn't speak to him for three days. They didn't know where I was. When finally, I took JR's call. I said, don't treat me like fucking Finkel. Because I love Howard too, but they treated him like a flunky and I wasn't going to fucking put up with it. And didn't. But that's, you know, it's just... But they did a lot of stuff to him, specific to Jim Ross. Yeah. Yeah. Who, beyond being an on-air character, was a high-ranking executive in that company. They fucked with him left and right to the point where, after a while, it was like, why are you doing this? The proc... What was it? The the thing where... Dr. Heine. Yeah, Dr. Heine. Yeah. yeah, I mean, that whole thing and... But that's why, you know, and that's... (sighs) J.R. liked what he was doing and liked being involved and liked announcing and liked working with the talent and liked everything about it and was making very good money. So, and, and you liked a lot of the people that he worked with, possibly not all of them, but most of them and has a grudging affection for Vince, despite all of the quirks that we've talked about that he has. But I often want well, I wonder right now, I mean, I'm not knocking Jim Ross when I say this, but he's, I know how old he is. He's 10 years older than me. So I'll be 60 this year. He'll be 70 if he's not already, whatever time his birthday is. Point is, you wouldn't be able to blast me out of my house with dynamite. You can barely do it now. And JR's got more money than the federal government. I know he's better off than I am. I, you know, so I don't know. It's the same thing as some of the Heyman. I've I've mentioned I've just I've bless him for it that he still wants to do this, but I don't know how these guys, especially with the state of the business these days and with all the things you have to go through and put up with, I don't know how that they can get the old passion and energy to get on a plane or get in a car and go to these towns and do this work and do these things on a regular basis still. Um, And I often, you know, rolled my eyes at why JR didn't just one day walk into fucking Titan Tower and say, Vince, I love you and you paid me a lot of money, but fuck all you motherfuckers. I've taken enough bullshit and I'm going home to buy God, Oklahoma. Instead of his nice ways that he usually (laughs) phrases things. I just. Would he have been able to put up with all of that if he hadn't worked for Bill Watts for so many years before that? Well, (laughs) There was it. It was a completely different atmosphere. I know it, it was, but it wasn't that. It was hard. demanding. No, it, it, but it wasn't. It was not hard to work for Bill Watts if you did the shit you were supposed to do and had half a lick of sense. You wouldn't get yelled at, and you wouldn't get that much heat. But you would learn like you were going to a military school for pro wrestling. the The hard thing about working mid south was the trips and the fans. If the fucking 4,000 miles some weeks in a car working eight or nine times didn't kill you, the fans stabbing you or beating the fuck out of you might. But I didn't think it it was much harder for me to put up with working in TNA than it was to work for Bill Watts because everything Watts did was successful. All the towns drew. The shows were fantastic. The talent was stacked up and everybody knew what they were doing. The the matches were great and the shows made the TVs made sense. You learned a lot. You fucking got there on time, dressed like you were supposed to, did the shit you were supposed to, and got to the next town. And if you did that, you were fine. So it was much easier to work. All you had to do was be perfect to work for Bill Watts. That was much easier than having to put up with sitting there and watching that fucking fiasco with shit stain right in TNA. And those production meetings and the fucking fall to all where everybody was running around trying to ask whoever they thought they would be more favorable to them if they could do something or WCW under TBS in 1990. That was hard to sit there and watch that all those missed opportunities and talent going to waste and shows not drawn, not because of the wrestlers, but because of the fucking idiot that the corporation had assigned to run the thing and didn't know anything about it 
at various points in my life, it's I've done all kinds of things in wrestling that were much harder than working for Bill Watts. Just be perfect and don't die. Get there. Make the schedule and don't get killed. That's all you had to do and you and 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 be perfect and you were fine with Watts. I can I can actually admire that because that's what I tried to instill in everybody in OVW. The trips were a whole lot easier. Some guys were making money and some weren't because some had contracts and some weren't, but the trips were easier. All you got to do is show up on time, protect the business, and be perfect. And you won't get yelled at. You ought to hear the way I cuss myself when I suck at something or fuck something up. You just, you can't hear it because I'm doing it internally. Because I can already hear myself thinking. I don't need to do it out loud. Well, maybe you could do it on canvas. That's a good idea. You know what? Maybe <laughs> what we could do is we could have a painting made of Jim Ross and Cowboy Bill Watts and Jr. sitting there under the learning tree and Watts is disseminating the information. I don't know if there's a photograph that exists like that, but you know what the good thing is about the fine folks at paintyourlife.com? They can combine photographs. So we can take a picture of Jim Ross sitting down and superimpose it over a picture of Bill Watts so he's on his knee and we can have that painting done. Maybe he'll want a painting of his favorite boss, though. Maybe it'll be him and Jim Hurd drinking at TGI Fridays. Oh, boy, howdy. <laughs> the coonskin cap himself, Jim Hurd. Anyway, if you want a professional hand-painted portrait created from any photo or combination of photos at a truly affordable price, folks, then you can go to paintyourlife.com and choose from a team of world-class artists and work with them on the details. It's a user-friendly platform. I've been hearing that word a lot lately. Platform where you can order a custom-made hand-painted portrait in less than five minutes. You can order it, and it, you get it in about three weeks, and you can combine generations of your family. You can have a painting of a cherished pet that's no longer with you, a special place that you remember. Put all kinds of people into painting. Make a Sgt. Pepper album cover. Whatever you want to do, they can do it for you at Paint Your Life. Birthday gift, anniversary gift, wedding gift, Father's Day. Coming up, a little candid photography. Regardless, <laughs> at PaintYourLife.com, you will enjoy and love the quality product that you receive. It's guaranteed. If you don't love the final painting, your money is refunded. And right now, our listeners can get 20% off the painting and free shipping. 20% off the painting and free shipping. I don't know how they make money at this. All you got to do is text the word DRIVE, D-R-I-V-E, to 64,000. That's DRIVE to 64 with three zeros. DRIVE to 64,000. 20% off the painting and free shipping at paintyourlife.com. These folks are going to fix you guys up. Clear some wall space. Take some other pictures down because you're going to love this one from Paint Your Life. Terms apply. Available at paintyourlife.com slash terms.